What is up guys, Priscilla Williams, aka The Swole Professor, here to educate you on health and social well-being. And today, guys, we're going to be talking about are the big three necessary in order to maximize hypertrophy and muscle growth? Now, I know this seems to be a very controversial topic. I really don't know why. As usual, most of these topics aren't that controversial if you simply look at the science and research behind them. Now, as a power lecturer, I'm probably going to get a little bit of hate for this video and I understand that that's okay but before I get started let me please express and emphasize that I personally believe that yes I believe that if you're able to you should definitely incorporate the big three into your workouts I 100% I believe that and 100% agree with that and that you should do it however I don't believe that you have to do them because they're absolutely necessary to maximize muscle growth in those areas I believe you should do them just because they're part of the seven basic human movement patterns that are just essential for life and for those of you who don't know what those are that includes squatting lunging hinging rotating walking pushing and pulling those are the seven essential movements right so if we think about it this way basically you know squatting that's pretty obvious the barbell squat goblet squat front squat i don't care what type of squat you're doing i believe everyone should do some type of squat if we look at lunges there's lots of different ways you can do that movement step ups technically would count for that uh barbell lunges dumbbell lunges if you want to use kettlebells whatever and then when you look at things like hinging, any type of deadlift, that's where you're gonna, that's where you're gonna get your hinging from. That's why deadlifts are so important. It's a normal, natural human movement, hinging at the hips. If we look at walking, obviously you walk around. If you look at rotating, that's when you're moving back and forth and rotating. And then of course, if we look at pushing and pulling, pushing would be covering, you know, your bench press, your overhead press, your inclined dumbbell press, and then pulling, that's your pull-ups, your barbell rows, etc. So the seven basic human movement patterns, I definitely think they're important. That's why I personally believe incorporating the big three is good and important for your health. However, <laughs> the problem seems to be, to me anyway, is that a lot of people seem to have this dogmatic, not scientific, like I said, I just pretty much gave you in a nutshell the scientific reasons why you may want to incorporate it, but this dogmatic mindset of, no, you have to do the big three, or otherwise you're not gonna maximize muscle growth, or oh, otherwise you know, you're weak, you're pitiful, you're pathetic, oh, you're just a wuss. And I don't understand that mindset, just because it's like, if somebody truly, at the end of the day, doesn't enjoy the big three, if they don't like bench, if they don't like flat bench pressing, if they don't love squatting, if they don't like deadlifting, then, okay, you don't have to do it. I'm not saying that I don't think you should do it, but it's kind of like full body. Is that the most optimal way to train for a natural lifter? Does all the science and research and evidence back that up? Yes, but do you have to do it if you don't enjoy it? No, can you still get effective results training with push-pull legs or push-pull or upper-lower or even a bro split if you still follow those basic principles that are necessary for muscle growth such as progressive overload, controlling your caloric intake, etc. consistency? Yes, you absolutely can. So for those reasons, I don't believe that no, it, it's not necessary to use those movements in order to maximize muscle growth. Now, do I think that they're very efficient for that reason as well as the health reasons? Absolutely. If I had to pick between a squat and a leg press, I'm going with the squat every time. Why? Not because the leg press isn't effective for building up the legs, but because, as you guys know, your boy Marcellus, the Swole Fester, is all about those bang for your buck movements. I'm trying to get the most benefit I can out of a movement. While yes, both the squat and leg press will help develop the legs, the squat does so much more than that. It's gonna help me with my stability. It's gonna help me with my core strength. It's gonna help me with some back development. The squat overall just hits more total muscles, which is why it's seen as a full body movement than the leg press. So it's kind of like I'm getting the benefit that I'm looking for plus extra. Why would I not want that? Why would I not go with that, right? So, and it's the same reason why I would pick a pull up over a lat pull down for the same reason. But if we're just talking strictly from a muscle building standpoint like okay like I've given you guys I've done a whole video for pull-ups and I'll link that down below for those of you who want like the full pull-up breakdown tutorial where I give you all of the science and research behind the pull-ups I break a bunch of myths between the pull-ups the chin-ups train the back in general and just give you a great tutorial overall as far as like how to perform the movement I'll link it down below but the thing is I give you all the reasons why I think you should be doing pull-ups, right? But if somebody just doesn't want to do pull-ups, but they just but they can do lat pull-downs to still develop their back. They can. As I've explained briefly before, guys, there's no such thing as like a magical exercise, right? Like I love the question when it's like, hey, what's the best movement for this or this? Now, mind you, there are certain things where it can be the best movement from a performance standpoint, depending on what we're talking about, right? For example, overhead press, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a more useful pushing movement for athletic performances than the bench press. Why? Well, with most athletic performances, you're standing up like you are with overhead press and your core is gonna be engaged like with the overhead press. On the bench, you're laying on your back, so it's not, your core isn't as engaged. It's not as much of a full body motion like with athletics. So I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that there aren't some moves that are just 
poor. For example, like even though I know a lot of people don't like because of how it affects the wrist, things like that, if you look at the research behind it, a strict barbell curl is a better overall bicep builder than an easy barbell curl. That is a fact. You guys can look that up, research it a little bit for yourself. I'm curious to see if any of you can leave in the comments and explain why. Like I said, this channel is about helping you guys get self-regulated. So instead of like, even though I'm giving you all the information related to the topic at hand, if I bring up another topic like this, go ahead and challenge me on it. Look it up and find out for yourself. I'm not saying you can't build your biceps up with the easy barbell curl. Obviously you can, but as I've explained before, in terms of movements, it's not that, it, basically any movement that works the muscle, you can build that muscle up. You can maximize the growth in that muscle. But if it's not as efficient a movement, you may have to do more total work with that movement or it may take you longer to build the muscle up with that movement. That's why I say, you know, go with those for those bang for your buck movements. But at the end of the day, the point is this. You do not have to squat in order to build up great legs. You do not have to bench press in order to build up a great chest. You do not have to deadlift in order to build up your hamstrings or your back. If you, like, I mean, look, look, look at all the people, both, I'm not just talking about the ones who aren't natural. There are natural bodybuilders out there who do not deadlift and they still have excellent backs, excellent glutes, and excellent hamstrings. If we're looking at it from purely a hypertrophy standpoint, if they can build those muscles, then no, the movement is not necessary. Now, do I still think you, it makes more sense to incorporate it just because it hits so many muscles at once, and that way you won't have to do as much extra work with your lying hamstring curls and your direct back movements? Sure, why not? But that's just because I believe in looking at things from an optimal and effective standpoint. But if you don't enjoy the movement, if you absolutely feel like you're gonna kill yourself if you have to deadlift, then don't deadlift. If you feel like, man, I just can't stand squats, screw squats, squats are from the devil, don't squat. If you don't like to bench press, except for this, I've already explained this to you guys before, and you can go check out my video over like, you know, different things you can do to help optimize your chest gains. The people say, oh, I just don't like the bench press because I just don't feel it or it's just, I don't think it's a good chest builder. Go watch that video because you either are just doing the bench press incorrectly or you're getting way too caught up in this mindset of like, oh, I just don't feel it as much as this. Look, I'm not even gonna get into it. Just know that the bench press by default, if you're using proper form, your chest has no choice but to work in the best way possible if you're doing the bench press correctly. I'm not even gonna get into that. but. The point is, guys, you don't have to do those moves in order to maximize growth. I know some people where they never flat press. They just like doing incline or weighted dips, and that's okay. That's totally fine. I know some people that don't do any type of bench press, and that's okay. They just do dips and maybe different flies and stuff like that. That's okay if you don't want to do it. Now, I'm not saying it's okay necessarily from an overall functionality or health standpoint, but from the sake, purely talking about hypertrophy. You don't have to do the big three. People need to get away from this dogmatic attitude where we just worship certain things in the fitness industry. Like at the end of the day, man, it's like you're working out for your health, yes, but then also part of it is fun and enjoyment. So if you can get the same benefits, even if it's not as efficient, even if it's suboptimal and it may take you longer, but it's what you enjoy, go for it. It's literally the same mindset that I, like I said, when it comes down to like, you know, oh, should I train full body or do a different split? Like, do what you enjoy, man. At the end of the day, if you're someone where you're trying to maximize your results as optimally and efficiently as possible, then yeah, you may want to incorporate the big three into your programming because they are really excellent movements for hypertrophy, regardless of the, of, um, the opposite dogma, which is that, oh no, the big three are trash. Look at all these powerlifters who do the big three and they, they don't look great at all, but there's more to it than that, guys. I've already done a video over like why, you know, you'll see a huge difference between how bodybuilders and powerlifters look, especially if we're talking about something like the bench press. Well, let's be real, a lot of powerlifters aren't bench pressing for hypertrophy. That's why they're using the huge excessive arch and going really wide and cutting the range of motion down. Of course, if you're only lowering the bar by two inches, you're not getting a whole lot of chest work and development. But regardless, the big three are excellent moves for overall strength and hypertrophy, but you don't have to do them if you don't want to. They're, they're not, they aren't necessary. As simple as that, it's not a necessity. That's, that's what this whole video is about. I'm not saying if the big three are good, that's not what this video is about, because I believe they are. It's not a debate of, oh, are the big three great for hypertrophy? That is non-negotiable. That is a fact, pure fact. Yes, they are great for overall hypertrophy and muscular development if you know what you're doing and how to incorporate them properly. But are they a necessity? Meaning if you if somebody never bench presses, can they, is it true that if I never bench press, I'll never maximize my chest growth? No, that's not true. Is it true that if I never squat, I can never maximize my leg growth? No, that's not true either. Same thing with the posterior chain, the deadlifts. I think it's an easy, efficient way of going about it if you incorporate them, but you don't have to. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'm not, there's nothing more to say. I'm not gonna keep repeating myself over and over. I've already done that already. But yes, to answer everyone's question, no, the big three is not necessary. You should do them for other reasons, and they are great for hypertrophy, but if you absolutely don't wanna do them for hypertrophy, if you have other movements that you'd rather do instead, 
go for it. That is okay. Don't let anybody judge you for that. Regardless if they say, oh, you're weak, man. You're pitiful. You're just, you guys know the choice words people like to use for those who don't like to squat, deadlift, and bench. But that's okay. At the end of the day, you got to do what you enjoy. So long as what you're doing has been proven to be effective. Even if it's not as effective as something else, so long as it's still effective, so long as it works, then you're good. That's it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you did not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.